Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Vancouver for OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Stu Miniman. We have two great guests here from Red Hat and Cisco, Ranga Rangachari, VP and GM of Red Hat Storage, and Dwayne DeCapi, who's the Director of OpenStack Product Management, Cisco. Welcome to theCUBE, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thanks Thank for having us. Okay, so Red Hat and Cisco. So what we're talking here is scale, efficiency, simplicity, What's the story? I mean, can it be that easy? I mean, UCS is popular. What's going on with you guys? What's going on in the relationship? Well, so um, we have Cisco validated design, CVDs together, where we put all the components together, compute, storage, and networking. You have Cisco UCS, as you mentioned, unified computing system, good compute and storage. Um, Red Hat on top of that, RHEL OSP, as well as Ceph technology. Um, we have Cisco validated designs. We also have UCSO, uh, UCS integrated infrastructure for OpenStack, but we de-risk the solution and we provide all the best practices for a complete compute storage and networking solution. Let's talk about the de-risking, because you know, certainly you guys know, and certainly I know from the Cisco days, is that the policy based is really important, especially at the mm -hmm. network level. Now it's storage, software defines a is big rage, but everyone wants scale out storage. Yep. So that is the real the value that you're seeing with open source. Are you guys tying that together, this preserving the scale out nature? What is the Ceph designed for? And that's the real, real design thing. Can that's you explain how that works? Yeah. And how do you make it enterprise grade? Let me start and let Dwayne can obviously also fill in on this. I think that's a great point because we've seen this trend shift over the last two to three years where it's no longer about scale up, it's scale out, right? Whether it's files or objects or block, it's about how horizontal scaling happens without any degradation in performance or capacity. So the intrinsic part of the Ceph architecture is something called the crush algorithm. And I don't want to make this a PhD thesis around the crush algorithm <laughs> because Sage Wheel, who is the author of the Ceph project, is, is a better person to What does to crush stand about. for real quick? So crush essentially stands uh, for uh, controlled, uh, redundant, uh, under scale, uh, R is, uh, S is scalable, H is hashing, right? So, and it's an offshoot out of the original Rush algorithm. And the fundamental thesis behind the Crush algorithm is when the data gets placed, because when you're talking about billions of objects and millions of objects, you need to have an hashing algorithm that's not directory bound. Yeah. So the algorithm essentially is smart enough, it's policy based, that it knows where storage is placed and then there's no single point of failure. So those two elements really help you scale. So you're tracking the data. Tracking basically. the data, you know, with, with the hardware in mind. So okay. what your power supply looks like, what the hardware disks look like, what the storage subsystem looks like. Essentially what customers care about is yeah. can this scale yeah. without compromising on performance and without compromising on the availability. So that's so, the... So we can joke yeah. around saying Cisco's crushing it in storage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or Red Hat is too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what does this mean for enterprises? Obviously, you know, software is key, software defined, yeah. uh, everything is going on. Um, you said not bound by the directory. You meaning from a scope of the data where it resides what? or across platforms? What does that mean specifically? Well, it is highly re redundant in that it's across multiple nodes. So you can have multiple UCS servers, you know, spread geographically. So the ability for you to track the data, regardless of where it resides, is one of the key attributes of the cache algorithm. Now, if you pop a level higher, uh, we are absolutely seeing the trend where customers are moving to a software-defined everything, right? But a fundamental part of the software-defined architecture is you need to have a real, I guess, uh, enterprise-ready hardware that innovation happens on a daily, weekly basis, take advantage of that. So that's where the Cisco relationship really comes in, and I'll let kind of Dwayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dwayne, maybe if I, I could tee mm -hmm. it up for you there. Sure. So, you know, we, we, we actually talked to Sage last year at the Atlanta mm -hmm. Summit, um, and, you know, Red Hat's a software company. And they, yep. they mm -hmm. have, you know, they've got the Ceph pieces, they've got Gluster, um, you know, they've, they've done a lot in OpenStack for a bit. Um, Talk us through, you know, I, I obviously know the CVDs, but you know, how does uh, you know Cisco tie into that? Sure. Is it the underlying hardware? Is there some software uh -huh. pieces on top of that? Sure, um, absolutely. So Cisco is market leader in the cloud infrastructure market synergy research group. Um, Cisco UCS is a great compute and storage <laughs> platform. Like take the UCS C240, for example, um, which is part of the UCSO offer between Cisco and Red Hat. So 
Um, it supports up to 12 large form factor drives, so up to 60 terabytes with uh, two SSD drives. You also have the UCSC 3160 for 60 large form factor drives for up to roughly 360 terabytes. But kind of what that means is with the storage architecture and the amount of storage that you have, you overlay something like you know Red Hat Ceph on top of it, and you have a complete kind of scale out storage solution. And uh, what Ranga mentioned was because the crush algorithm allows the location of the storage to be computed rather than stored, there's no single point of failure. You know, there's no controller, there's no metadata server, and you combine that with UCS with the active active uh, fabric pass and the high scalability. It's a really nice so scale out storage solution. So what's the main benefit? Throughput or I/O? I mean, is it IOPS? Is it throughput? What's the main value of that? So it's, uh, I'll let, it's, I think uh, customers, so the way the customers think about this, they look at three different dimensions. You know, one is latency, the other is performance, the third is capacity. So depending on the workload, you know, there are certain what we call cheap and deep with just a huge archival element where capacity is more important than performance and latency. Or you have classic scale out where performance and latency comes in. So what we are working with Cisco on is classic you know, CVDs that help organizations go back and take a lot of the guesswork out of the system, which is if I'm running this type of a workload, what's the best configuration that I can expect from the Cisco hardware and the Ceph software to work together. So that's the overarching theme behind what we're doing. So Dwayne, the put this in Cisco's mm -hmm. language now, because Cisco has been doing this stuff from the infrastructure mm -hmm. from day one, from balancing you know, packets, local bound, local director, all that stuff, and <laughs> routers. Software's change, obviously. Is the centralized uh -huh. piece a big part of it? And how does UCS make it intelligent? Because that's going to be the key thing. Mm -hmm. And, and, yeah. and has across, how does that work across all the other Cisco UCS opportunities? Sure. Uh, so UCS, it's a very innovative server solution. It was designed for virtualization and cloud from the ground up. Um, it has its own um, integrated management controller, IMC chip, built into it. So it uses the UCS manager. So you can actually configure it with a real easy to use GUI. Uh, you can configure it securely with SSH and CLI, but you create service profiles, essentially, which are things like RAID levels, you know, BIOS levels. It makes it very easy to get a new server configured. It makes it very easy to copy configurations from one server to another. It makes it very easy to replace a server, but it's really the UCS manager dramatically lowers the OPEX and enables the scale out architecture. Right. So, you know, when, when Red Hat made the acquisition of, uh, of Ink Tank there, uh, one of the things that had flagged for me was that when I looked at the survey of people using OpenStack, you know, Ceph was right near the top. Cluster was another one, so yeah. Red Hat's, you know, mm -hmm. bought a lot of those open source, you know, groups that, that are being it. Talk a little bit about the customers. Where are customers with, not just Ceph, but with OpenStack in general, and, you know, do, do you have any kind of joint stories that you can share with us? Good. Uh, sure. Um, so, so for example, um, Broad Institute, so uh, we'll be doing a session tomorrow where we talk a little bit more about it, um, but just kind of the ease of use of UCS to scale out combined with the power of, of Red Hat. Um, but we're seeing lots of interest and adoption with Cisco and Red Hat. And you know, the, the other part is, even though it's been a year since the acquisition, right, one of the things that I'm personally very thrilled with is just the, what I would call unabated pace of innovation that's going on in the Ceph community. Uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, um, you know, Yahoo, I think they published a blog how they were managing almost a 14 petabyte of storage using the Ceph technology for their Flickr property. That shows you, you know, the true nature of what we mean by scale out. Today the conversation isn't about terabytes, it's about petabytes. So scale out becomes very, very key. So while we continue to innovate on the product side, what I'm continue to be amazed with just the innovation that's going on in the community. Right. And support for both block and object, object storage with yes. Ceph, which is very nice. All right, so, so you know, we've got the kind of the momentum with Ceph, the, the partnership with Red Hat and Cisco has been mm -hmm. on for many years. Um, you know, what, 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 what's your thoughts around OpenStack in general? You know, you, it's early day one here at the conference, but you know, how many of the conversations that you're having uh, with your customers at least have OpenStack, and how many of them are, are asking for that at this point? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you from our perspective, uh, the, the upswing in the conversation compared to where we were a year ago is definitely you know, way more than where we, uh, where we were a year ago. And that's, you see that in the crowd today, right? It's, uh, I don't know, somebody told me it's 5,000, 6,000 people at the yeah, summit. So, so six is, to seven, yeah. Which is what, 40, 50% more than where we were in Atlanta yeah, over, over 4,000 last year. So, so definitely, it's not about, it's not in the lunatic fringe, if you will, it's kind of becoming more and more mainstream adoption. And we have hundreds of proof of concepts on the OpenStack um, side of things, and a vast majority of them have Ceph part and parcel of that uh, implementation. 
So what is the big uptake in Ceph with customers? Can you guys talk about the use cases in particular? What, what specifically are they uh, adopting Ceph So for? I'd say the number one use case for Ceph is block with OpenStack. I mean, the survey, and I saw the survey from yesterday too for this conference is still, Ceph is still north of 60% of uh, the storage mm -hmm. substrate for OpenStack. So that is by far what I would, if I can use the word, the killer app for the Ceph uh, block solution today. And obviously, that the, you know, even for object, the scale out object, is another use case where, especially around the what I would call the uh, digital enterprise, where people are just you know audio, video, all those things need to be managed. Those would be the two key use cases that we are seeing in the marketplace today. And how about is it for cost control perspectives? I mean, mostly. No, you know, I think the, it's more than cost, I think it's a flexibility, which is really starting people to look at and say, okay, cost does factor into the equation, but I think fundamentally it's about you know, scale out. You know, they want the ability to start at, I don't know, 500, 800 terabytes, and can you really score up to 20 petabytes of storage? Yeah. So the number one thing when we ask them, why do you go with the solution? It's about scale, the scale out nature of it. So I got to ask both of you guys, the evolution of open source, you got APIs, this is now table stakes in the cloud. How does it all work? I mean, Red Hat, you guys are purists in the open <laughs> source you know, formula. We, you know, pure play open source, great business models, been working great for many years. Now you have this kind of, like the ODP model in Hadoop, you're seeing people work together. The EMC's adopting open source, other people are adopting open source. So open source is now becoming an opportunity, but also in some cases a marketing program. So I got to ask the open source question to you guys. How does, uh, how does the open source community win with this? How do you guys get the advantage of the rising tide floats all boats of open source? Mm -hmm. And how does that render itself in the customer environment? Is it through APIs and whatnot? How does that work? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's all about solving customer problems, right? Tremendous interest in open source, tremendous adoption, the power of the community. Uh, we compete on implementation, provide software and services, provide value add layers on top of it. Uh, but it, it's very much, it's a major asset to be able to have something that can be changed and, and is very flexible. And just when we look at the OpenStack surveys, you know, it's not even the cost savings that's the most important thing. It's the flexibility and the pace of adoption. And so we we're com we completely support that. Well, that's what you're saying about that. flexibility. Yeah. That means mm -hmm. what tuning it. That means writing code. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it's it's about flexibility to fine tune to uh, certain hardware in implementations, but also, I, I think it goes beyond open APIs. Yeah, I think there's uh, there's more value in open source than just open APIs, right? Yeah. So we subscribe to the theory that open APIs is in a way a subset of open source. Yeah, I would right? agree. Right. So that. for somebody to fully take advantage of it, the other interesting thing that I saw in uh, the OpenStack survey yesterday was, if you look at the amount of storage, uh, I think there was one class which was one petabyte and above. Last year it was 2%, this year it's 6%. Mm -hmm. So that to me is a true indicator of people starting to grow their storage infrastructure mm -hmm. within OpenStack. A 3X between yeah. last year and this year is pretty good. I mean, yeah. the people want freedom and choice. That's obviously, you know, open source equals freedom. That's always been our mantra on theCUBE. But when you have production environments, they like say Cisco environments, yeah. there's a lot of proprietary gear involved in Cisco. It's certainly huge de facto install base, de facto standard, I always call, you know, the Cisco model. But the idea is that they want control with open source flexibility to do tuning, but they want security. They want to have a comfort Absolutely. blanket. They want a warm, you know, warm, fuzzy, you know, blanket to kind of go to bed at night and not worry about failure. So I got to ask about, you know, redundancy, mm -hmm. throughput. Talk about this idea of failure. Is there a single point of failure problem? What do the customers talk to you guys about in this? Because that comes back down to, okay, love open source, love, but will it work and will it fail? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who do I call? Mm -hmm. Is it a single choke to throw, choke mm -hmm. to throw? Let me, <laughs> throat to choke. You know what I'm saying? So like, uh -huh. customers yeah. worry about that stuff. Right. What's, so the, what's the failure point in describing that? If I can just take a stab sure, at the please, doing. Go ahead. Yeah. So I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Which is, there is a huge difference between a project and a product, right? And if you look at, and we pay very close attention to it, right? I mean, it's great from an innovation standpoint that's going on in the community. But for us to give our customers a bunch of bits, you know, we absolutely make sure that it's enterprise ready. Right, that includes security, yeah. that includes you know, things like testing, everything else that customers take for granted. So that's, if you can think of it, that's a secret sauce we add to the overall, at least yeah. from the software oh, what, side of things. 10 years you guys offer on yeah. your Unreal? Un yep. yep. And it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's 10 huge, years. and you know, customers like, can call us from you know, yeah. release. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one thing that, the, the comfort that they get in going with the Red Hat Ceph storage is the fact that look, 
this has got the red hat badge behind it. I yeah, know yeah. what it stands for. So yeah, I get that. Yeah. I get that all. But I mean, that's that's the kind of like that's the overarching like yeah. warmness that you guys provide with the tenure. But in agile cloud, you know, mm -hmm. stuff's breaking. Right? Yeah, you got to be ready for having the failover. So yeah. talk about that piece of it with this with the new with the new stuff with Ceph. I mean, is there a single point of failure? Is it more redundant? Is it distributed? Well, I, I can talk about the Ceph inherently is a very distributed architecture, yeah. right? And there is no single point of failure. It is built from the ground up, as you were talking about earlier, built from the ground up for an environment that scales out. So you cannot have a single point of failure. Things like no metadata and all those things are just attributes of that, but the the fundamental thesis on how, what Ceph is built upon, and so is Gluster, is there is no single point of failure. So, And that's the scale out. That's, yeah. the, that's the whole scale yes. out. Okay. So your, what's your take on yeah. this? So absolutely, and then when you add the, the um, active, active fabric pass, the fabric interconnect on UCS, for example, one node can go down, the other can pick up. Um, there's also a lot of technologies just to scale out the yeah. server technology, plug in a new UCS blade, or it's automatically discovered as part of the chassis. But these are the things that, that the customer needs because you made an excellent point, is you know they, we, they need quality components behind this cloud, and they need something that's going to lower their OPEX. All right, so where did Crush come from? Back to this uh, controlled replication under hash, whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> Is that, is that a joint, is that a Red Hat product? Is that Cisco? No, is open so source? Crush is actually Sage Wheel, who uh, was the founder of okay, uh, Ink Tank. Ink Tank. Okay. Uh, that was uh, his PhD project that he okay. authored with a couple of his peers when he was at University of Santa Cruz. So that is kind of the genesis of the Crush. But that's algorithm. part of Red Hat with the acquisition. Mm -hmm. That's part of the Ceph. Project? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. It's part of the Ceph uh, project, and it's part and parcel of it, right? And then, yes, we, you know, inherit that as part of the Red Hat stuff. So you guys are staying behind this pretty, pretty big way. Absolutely, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Dwayne, I got to ask you about the Cisco. UCS mm -hmm. has been really hot lately, certainly a lot mm -hmm. of debate on market share on the server side, <laughs> what they include, they don't. We always debate on the cube, you know, <laughs> server shares up and, why is UCS popular? Why is it so successful? Is it more of it because it's integrated? I mean, what was what's the what's the magic behind uh, UCS's success? Well, I mean, it, it's designed from the ground up to scale and for virtualization. It's designed for a single fabric for networking, compute, as well as management. Uh, the integrated management controller directly as part of the infrastructure. The um, the service profiles, setting RAID and BIOS settings. Uh, it's designed from the ground up to be very scalable, you know, which is why it's been a component of, you say, D blocks and flex pods and now OpenStack. Yeah. So, 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 Dwayne, you bring up a great point because with the wave of virtualization, you know, kind of was the, the rising tide that rose all boats. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I cataloged over two dozen storage partnerships that Cisco has. Uh, mm -hmm. What makes the, the Red Hat partnership kind of special, or you know, what 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 customers mm -hmm. are, are driving it towards that joint solution sure. set oh, between sure. the two of you? Um, so, you know, Red Hat leader in open source. You know, Cisco leader in cloud infrastructure. Mar uh, market share. It's a great partnership. Um, quality components for a complete compute storage and networking solution. So yeah. very excited about working with Red Hat, including our CVDs and our joint offers like UCSO. All right, so what's the outlook for the show? What are you guys working here? What are the, some of the conversations you're hearing in the hallways around your relationship, around OpenStack? Share with the audience in the last minute we have some of the, the top conversations that you guys are involved in. <laughs> Well, it's just three hours into the show, so I haven't had too many opportunities. But overall, you know, I think uh, at least informal conversations I've had with customers around the CVDs or the reference architectures, that really rings home. You know, because that's one of the things they look at and go, "Does it not a missing piece?" That having that really takes a lot of the friction out of the system. So, you know, we are bullish. I'm sure Cisco is. The customers Absolutely. are eagerly looking forward to it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I noticed the conversation is changing. It's not so much about pilot anymore, it's about production. Um, a lot more um, activities. Um, people are excited about where OpenStack is going. Lots of questions about Magnum for containers, which is something that Cisco and Red Hat are, are working on. Um, ironic for bare metal you know, yeah. in the in the release as well, but people are very excited about the feature velocity. We have some crowd chat activity from Bert Lattimore and some folks um, on, on chat here. Regarding Red Hat Ceph storage, this is, this is to you. I'm wondering about all the potential use cases for delivering just-in-time scale out for those high growth applications that are somewhat unpredictable. Yeah. What does he mean by that? This is from David Deans. So, yeah, I think the, the key word is unpredictable, right? Which is, that's one of, when I, when I have these customer conversations, I think scale out and unpredictability go hand in hand. Because there's no way to predict. If I open up a, you know, if I'm a line of business for a large insurance company and open up a web property, 
you have no idea whether it's going to be 2,000 people are going to show up or 20,000 people are going to show up. So how do you have a storage infrastructure that really accommodates and brings some control into that unpredictability? So this is again. This is the hyperscale model. You got to be ready for auto scaling, all auto -scaling, kinds of this, yep. all, those, all that stuff. All, That's all, all software. It's all software. It's self-healing. Yeah. You know, which is how do you go about adding 10 new servers? How do you make sure that the load gets distributed evenly? So. You know, those are all the conversations we have day in and day out. So, and I think the in this specific instance, the Ceph architecture lends itself really well to an unpredictable nature of yeah. the storage and, requirements and self-balancing as self well, self-healing and self-balancing. Great self point. Great point. Yeah, I mean, this is the grid computing vision. I mean, it's all the stuff's being recycled back from the old yeah. days. <laughs> SOA, <laughs> service-oriented <laughs> architectures, web services. I mean, I heard mm. SAML today in the keynote. Someone yeah. actually mentioned SAML. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, what year am I in? 2001? I mean, a lot of that stuff was being worked on by both you guys, mm -hmm. and I know for a fact. I mean, yeah. a lot of the web services stuff is now here, yeah. but it it's got a little cloud twist to it. Plus the trajectory it's on. I mean, that's yeah. the more important part, right? Which is just the, from last 12 months ago, where we are, yeah. I'm sure you guys are seeing the same thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's where the rubber hits the road, so I've got to ask you a final question. For the folks watching, we always say, you know, OpenStack's got to go faster, got to go faster, and certainly the big vendors are coming in, bringing some real muscle to the table in terms of code and, 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 and knowledge and IP uh, in an open way, you know, out in the open. What, what's, what's the show this year? What is the meat on the bone? What is the real deal? What proof points are here at this show that you've seen or are hearing that can give confidence that OpenStack has legs? I mean, I look at the agenda, there are a lot more customer presentations, right, if from compared to previous years. That to me is a true testament of adoption. Right? We, you know, the vendors can yeah. talk all they want, but the customers right. are... Yeah, the solutions. The solutions, exactly. That's yeah. the, I completely agree with that, but it, and it's even the applications the customers are yes. talking about. It's no longer, you know, just kind of DevOps, get an application up quick and running. Mission critical application, you know, large scale web service, large scale e-commerce. Yeah, and they're doing it in a way that's customized. That to me, that's what the whole promise of OpenStack mm -hmm. was. Can it be stable? Can it be hardened at, a, at the infrastructure Invested level? And then people can use the building blocks right. in whatever flavor mm -hmm. that they feel yeah. is their business model. Yeah. Exactly. That lends to their business, yeah. absolutely. Guys, thanks so much for coming on Thank theCUBE. Thank you. Red Hat and Cisco here on theCUBE together, sharing their relationship, their, their partnerships, what they're working on. And of course, we're sharing that with you. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break.